Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is Tests of Normality. Uh, this little statistical technique that seems to tie everyone in knots. So let's have a look. We're going to have a look at Tests for Normality. Why are we doing this? Does it matter? Should we use them? Um, now there are a number of these tests out there. Uh, I think there's an Anderson Darling test, uh, a Kolomorogov Smirnoff test, a Pearson chi squared test. Uh, I must admit, just quoting them makes you sound like a mathematical genius. But what is this all about? Why do I want a test of normality? Why do I want to know this? Well, it goes to the heart of using the statistics to, to understand the data better, to make predictions about tomorrow. So let's look at what you do. You take data from your process. You take the data, you should do three things with it. And by the way, what we're talking about here is variable data, measurable data. <clears throat> I'm going to do three things with it immediately. I'm immediately going to do a run chart. Let's have a look at this thing. What's the pattern look like? The next thing I'm going to do is a histogram. I want to see the distribution. I want to see the pattern on this. Instagram. Now usually for lots of the tools, lots of the software, this is the point where the normality test gets run. My software, I use something called SPC Excel and at this point SPC Excel will do the KS test, does the Kolomorogov Smirnoff test and it's a test for normality. Okay, why am I interested in normality? Because the next tool you're going to use is the CPK diagram. Now the CPK diagram is a prediction of what's going to happen. It is not an observed value. So when it predicts, when it predicts the defect rate over in these tails, this is a prediction. It is not an observation, so it's not looking at this and saying, I observed 3% here and 6% there, therefore, that's what the CPK diagram is telling me. Now, this is a prediction, and the prediction is based on the fact that this shape is present in the data. And really, that's all the normality test is for. Because all you're trying to do is to say, well, let's have a look at this. Let's say that this, this thing predicts a 9.6% defect rate. If I switch this process on, I'm going to get a 9.6% defect rate. The reason why you just want to check for normality is to say, is this a good estimate? All of the data you look at, all of the data you look at in your processes, they are estimates and you should be constantly asking this question, have I got a good estimate? And there are lots of tools to help you to do this. So initially, first thing, take a good sample size with the sample size comes a confidence interval. What does the confidence interval tell you? It tells you if you've got a good estimate. Okay, what else have we got? If you do a model, y equals mx plus c, you did a little, did a little bit of regression. x, of course, is the input. Now, y is the output. That's what Six Sigma is all about. Inputs and outputs. When you do this, you will get something called the R squared. 
because this equation is going to predict an output value for a specific input value. It's going to make a prediction. What's the R squared going to tell you? The R squared is going to tell you how good an estimate you've got. Okay, checking for normality. You check for normality because the CPK diagram, the CPK diagram is going to make an estimate. What makes sure that you've got a good estimate? Essentially, have you got a reasonable shape that agrees with this? Now here's the point about normality. Now you can do a fancy test if you wish, but what you might get, you might get the test saying that you haven't got normality, but when you look practically, look practically at the histogram, compare it to the CPK diagram, practically you might decide that this 9.6 is still valid. And if it's still valid, if you still think it's an estimate, by observation, then use it. Don't go doing a normality test and say, nah, the, but, the, but the mathematics says, the mathematics says this. Now the mathematics is a help. This is all about being practical and making money. So for example, the histogram, let's try and draw a very non-normal looking histogram. Um, we'll draw something that looks... Sort of like that, yeah, a little bit of a, let's put a bit, put some data out there. If you put that, if you put that through a columnar Smirnoff test, it's going to say, you know what, that's not normal. Um, if you do a CPK, you might do a CPK analysis and it might say, it's probably not going to say you've got 9.6, but let's say it's got, it's got a 15%, 15 defect rate. Um, at that point, does it matter? This is, this is awful. This process is terrible. This is chaos. This is complete chaos. The likelihood is that if you drop tolerances on this thing, because you're doing this because you've got a problem, you're going to see lots of rejects out here, lots of rejects out here. You know you've got a whacking great big defect rate. To be quite honest, at this point, I wouldn't even use the CPK diagram probably because I know it's not true, but if I just observe the defect rate, the observed defect rate is going to be so horrendous, I don't need to make a prediction at this point. I know I've got a disaster on my hands and I need to fix it. Don't get wrapped up in normality and try to say, some people say, well, we'll do a transformation. I'll do a, I'll do a data transformation and then I'll work out normality. <clears throat> Why? This diagram and this diagram are telling you you've got chaos. Your defect rate is telling you you've got cost and you've got unhappy customers on your hands. You do not need any more statistics at this point. What you need to do is to go and control the process. The normality test only helps you to say that this is valid. And to be honest, I don't even use a formal normality test. I just look at the shape. And if the shape is close to being normal, then I will accept this value and I will use it. But the likelihood is, when you've got a problem, the defect rate is so large, normally, it doesn't matter whether this is accurate or not. It's just confirming you've got a disaster on your hands. Go fix it. And that's what this is about. Don't get wrapped up in normality tests. They are handy sometimes, but they, practically, look at this, does it represent this? Yes, then I can trust this. Okay, it's got to fix the problem. And that's what normality is about. It's only to make sure you've got a good estimate, and that's all it's for. It's really not, it, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. You can do the tests if you want. I like to use my common sense. Normality is useful. Is my CPK prediction correct? And that's all it's for. Thank you. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, 
a little bit of help about lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.